Hello and welcome back to the channel. I do appreciate you stopping by and giving me your time. Hopefully you'll enjoy what you're watching. Might encourage you to have a go yourself. That's how I got into this, by watching other YouTubers. Now today we've uh, got a bulliver. I've never worked on a bulliver yet. But by all accounts, they're a, a nice movement. Now the one in this is the uh, 11 AL. You see there are a few scratches there on the back of that case. don't know if it is the original scrap but I can say I really don't like these they do pull the hairs from your arms we'll have to see what we can do about the back of that case later there's a few uh, deep scratches No idea what that number is, but I didn't wash the back just in case it disappeared. And it is something important. But it's very reluctant to run. Just about there. the power out the main spring what you can see me doing there is I'm just holding that click spring out the way and then letting it gently unwind what you don't want to do is let all of the power go all at once take out the winding stem this retaining ring and we can get it out of the case before we start on the movement we will have a little look at this case I don't know if you can see all of those little specks on the inside give that crystal a clean up as along with this case as you can see it's not uh, not the best it's seen better days see me use there is a little bit of plastic just to protect the dial I'll put the hands in that little tub along with the dial once we've got that off but I don't know if you'd noticed there the, the hands were in a terrible state I'll show you those a bit better later I just couldn't resist myself just to see how dirty this dial was. It is pretty grubby. But we will concentrate a little bit better on there. There's not a lot we can do with the dial, but we'll get on it with a little bit of uh, water. See if we get rid of some of that staining on the side. going to take it off now. 
on this movement there's two screws on the side there just loosen them off and the dial comes away again I've not seen anything like that on the back of a dial before so it's all, all new to me pretty much like this hobby so I've only really been doing this since February that's when I saw my first video as a naked watchmaker he made me made me smile and I really enjoyed what he was doing I thought it was fascinating and I watched a few more videos and I thought you know what I'm gonna give it a go now what we are going to do is we're just going to take off this balance because that is probably the most delicate part of the watch and I really don't want to do any damage Gently lift up the bridge there with it on. And as you can see, I'll move the movement out of the way and then get that onto a little stake just to keep it safe. Put it out of the way. going to take off the ratchet wheel and the click spring but I do urge you if you, you're interested in these sort of videos and you think oh, I'd really like to give it a go get onto eBay buy yourself a watch movement buy some cheap tools and give it a go one thing I will say is if you can, try with a pocket watch and look for something that has jewels in it. There will be lots of pin palette watches and they are a nightmare to try and work on. But what I will do is with this screw, I'm going to give you an idea as to the sort of sizes we're dealing with. So yeah, I've got a euro and then an English penny. And that screw I've just taken out. Yep, it will fit on her nose. Now these screws are a little magnetized. You see there's a, a little tray there with a lid that keeps the dust off everything. Now I am sorry if you can hear a bit of background noise. I don't have any specialised filming equipment or anything like that. So you may hear the fans on my PC going. If you do find you actually really are enjoying this hobby then there are so many things you can buy I think that's half the fun of it there's a tool for everything a couple of things I think are a must so if you decide you you're gonna keep at it get some decent tools some nice screwdrivers some nice tweezers I actually splashed out and bought myself a microscope and that really does change 
how you work. This bit can be a little tricky sometimes. I'm trying to do it so it's on camera for you. But all you don't want it to do is to unwind all at once and end up in the next room. Along with a lot of other parts. We're going to move the trainer wheels bridge. Those little pink things you can see, they're the jewels. artificial sapphires I believe. In the early days they used real ones but now the artificial ones are much better you get no inclusions or anything like that. Just taking out the trainer wheels now and inspecting the pivots as they come out. Now there is a bit of play in the main spring barrel arbor on that bridge so we will close that up later so out comes the pallet fork and that's stuck there as you can see now there is grease and oil everywhere know what that thing is. As you can see all that oil, far too much oil. We'll turn the watch over and we'll work on the keyless works. Now this is the bit that the stem operates and you pull it out to set the time and you push it in and you twist it to wind the watch up we're just taking out this little spring again using a bit of rodico on the end of a bit of pegwood and that stops it flying off like that little bit did. That's the, the setting lever. And when you're taking out these yokes you want to try and get as close to that post as you can and pull straight up. That's the, the wheels. doing is we're removing this capsule I'll put that into some bead it which will give it a good clean now this stuff evaporates as you look at it so you don't want to leave the lid off for too long and before we get it into the cleaner I'm going to give all of the pivots a clean now what I'm using to clean the pivots is a bit of Eve flex or ever flex like a little sanding stick which is round and the pivots will go inside and just in there is we'll put in the pallet fork I don't like to put that into the ultrasonic cleaner so 
along with the balance I don't put that into the ultrasonic cleaner either now I'm just moving all of these parts into these little mesh baskets bridges and the main plate in the big one I put my wheels in that little silver one and then I usually keep all of the other parts together as I've taken them out and I put them in the same little basket into the wash I've got this little basket I put everything in because my ultrasonic cleaner is in another room and then I transfer it to that other little tray which goes inside the ultrasonic cleaner now I have just got a watch cleaner so I may very well do a video on restoring that but while that's in there cleaning pop out into my shed into the man cave and give the a bit of a polishing now again like I said I haven't got specialised filming equipment I'm filming this part on my GoPro so sorry for the quality but I think you can see it's it's helping it. And what I do with the back is I give there's a small band around the, the middle of it with some writing on, if you like, some text. And give that a bit of a polish up and then what I will do is I'll then cover that up and have a real good go at that. The purpose of covering that up is to stop it paring down and losing all of the lettering. Now originally these parts that I'm cleaning there were brushed, so I don't want to go too mental on them. Now we move on to the hands. As you can see, they are in a, an awful state. Looks like they've gone a bit rusty. And what I'm doing there is I've just got them in some water. And I'm going to take out what I can, scrape it away. I don't know how old it is. It could be radioactive. I don't know. Sorry for Alexa there. That's the wife setting the timer for the chicken, for the Sunday roast. But now let's move on to the dial. Like I said, there's not a great deal you can do with dials. You run the risk of doing more damage than good. But on this one, I think we're a bit safe to use some water, a little cotton bud. We'll try and get off what we can. majority of the damage is around at the three o'clock where the winding stem was it's migration of a lot of the grease and dirt from that with that dial cleaned up it's time to try and give these hands a clean and what I'm going to do is use a bit of pegwood and a bit of poly watch see if that will help remove that rust as poly watch is normally used for cleaning watch crystals taking out small scratches I think it might work well with these hands
it seems to be removing the dirt and rust. Just doing the underside. Sorry for my excellent filming skills. I promise they will get better. <laughs> left to do is to put some new loom on. But what we're going to do now is sort out that play in the mainspring belt. And to do that we're going to use this staking set. Now because of use of error the camera I had set up to do a close-up I didn't press record, so I do apologise. But basically what we're going to do is the hole where the arbor fits in we're going to close it to and then reopen it again just enough so there's no play. Sorry about this, but I'm just trying that with the barrel, just off camera there. It's closed too, so it won't fit down. And then I've just used the reaming tool, open it back up again. Once I'm happy, I'll tidy up after myself. get into the assembly. You know, I don't have a mainspring winder so I had to put that in by hand. Again it was off camera for those little red dots that's oil. And what I like to do to put the arbor back in is to use a, a pin vise. just to keep it from pulling out. That's far too much oil there. Take some off. Even that's probably too much, but just put a bit on the arbor there. We'll put the lid on. Now that little white thing, you can buy these again on eBay for a few quid but I actually printed mine off make use of my 3D printer now what we're doing now is adding a bit of grease into the set and lever spring I need to clean my tweezers the setting lever there on the back I've just put in. We'll turn it over and screw it up. I do use a bit of roller to keep it in place. started and I was just putting a little bit of oil in where the main spring goes Going 
get the barrel bridge on. Get that screwed up. Just add a little oil where the quick spring will go. screwed down and then we can get the spring put back in and again these are the parts that do go flying so you always want to hold it down with a bit of pegwood or a bit of rodico or something like that what I would say is use pegwood when you're installing it and use a bit of rodico when you're taking it out Otherwise, if you use Rodico when you try to put it in, you can sometimes pull it back out. Now we're going to put the centre wheel in, pop a bit of oil on the stem there. And then we can put the ratchet wheel onto the barrel. Make sure things are running freely and we can put in the reversing wheel now on a lot of watches this reversing wheel will only have one screw and usually it's a left hand threaded screw so to undo it you turn it the do up way and to do it up you turn it the opposite way can catch you out and you can break the head off it but I do much prefer this design with the two screws now these are the screws that are on the Queen's nose If you do get any questions please leave a comment below if you've got any recommendations or any advice do the same I'll also leave a, an email address in the comments popping in the fourth wheel there And then the, the third wheel, only I've made a bit of an error here. It actually needs to go underneath that centre wheel and the ratchet wheel. But we do sort that out in a minute. This can probably be one of the trickiest things to do, is the trainer wheels. We'll pop in the escape wheel. going to 
come back to this the third wheel as we see it needs to go under that center wheel and ratchet wheel just like that and the better quality movement is the easier this part is as you can see there they just slip straight into the jewel holes pop in a screw stop anything moving I use a bit of pegwood again to keep that bridge down. Once we've got one screw in, it shouldn't go anywhere. Make sure everything all runs free again. all turn in as it should be we'll turn it over what we're going to do we're going to assemble the keyless works start with a sliding pinion put a bit of grease on that far too much grease on the end of that oiler put a bit of grease on the winding stem grease will get distributed when we get the rest of the works in we've got the yoke on there now we're just about to put the yoke spring in like I say use a bit of pegwood stop it going into the next room bit of oil on this post again where the minute wheel runs now I've got myself some new oilers and I can't use them it's far too much oil some of the excess away the tiniest bit of grease on the center wheel pinion just before we install the cannon pinion which to be honest I should have done before that minute wheel you can cause yourself troubles but again I'm going to keep all my mistakes in hopefully as the videos go on the mistakes will get less that's the idea doing this. 
stage I'm just giving the balance and the capsule from the bottom a bit of a clean along with a pallet fork as you can see that stuff evaporates as you look at it and it's not cheap pallet fork in and then the pallet fork bridge if it's two screws it's a bridge if it's one screw it's a cock towards getting this movement assembled see if it will fire up it's always my favorite part like I say if you do want to get into this hobby there are loads of other channels that are really informative what I'm just doing here is oiling the pallet for jewels I say jewels jewel distribute that oil along the escape wheel teeth so now we're going to get this jewel in at the bottom it's just the the smallest amount of oil, a little bit more than that. Like I say I'm uh, struggling with these oilers I've got. That's my old one which I broke the end off. these chatons that's that metal part with the other jewel in they do have a, a bit of a habit of flying away but that one had something stuck just over the hole which I've removed oh, there's a hair Use a bit of Rodico, I think. There we go. Now we can get the balance in and see if it will run. Now the point of putting that in first at the bottom, that jewel, if you don't, you're going to struggle to get this lined up and to get it actually running. There we go. Now I did put it on the time grapher at the very start and I couldn't get a reading so I didn't bother pulling that in but once we've got it assembled we will put it back on there and see what we can get it running like. Now that isn't what I was expecting. There's something wrong with the balance. And taking it out, having a little look, I can see that a couple of the coils are sticking together. Now it's either dirt or oil, or they could be magnetized. So I do have this app. As you can see there, it's not going off, but I've got this magnetised handle, and that's going crazy. I'm going to take it away and put it over the balance. 
here's nothing it says to me it's still dirty so we'll pop it back into the version B dip raise the wheel a little bit separate the coils and then get in there with my blower agitate it around and hopefully that will be enough to give it a clean I'll pop it onto my little stake here and again I'll get my blower and blow off any excess cleaning fluids there we go no longer sticking so let's get it back in and see if that's made any difference Now I really shouldn't do that with a screwdriver, again I should have used my blower, but much better. So we'll get the hour wheel on. And then there's this little dial washer, it's a real thin washer made of brass. Time to put that dial on. Got the two dial screws. on really doesn't matter where you put it once we've got it down we'll uh, set it to an o'clock making sure there it's straight and level now put it to 12 o'clock this one wants to sit at the five past mark so who am I to argue and then the trickiest hand of all seconds hand just secure that in place take out the winding stem make sure there's nothing on the dial we can pop the case over it. Pop the winding stem back in and we're almost there. Well, oh, setting the lever screw. Then we can get there back on the 
watch, get a strap on it, and not before putting that retaining ring back in. It's just a, a press fit case. Let's get a strap on it. Nice dark brown leather strap I've got. And we will see it out in the wild in a minute. But I want to thank you once again for spending your time with me. I hope you've enjoyed watching. The puns will keep coming. And uh, I will see you on the next one.